dearest Rita and boys, I have no regrets except for the one that is with me always, that the war has come to separate me from you and the boys. But I could not have done otherwise. I am where my conscience tells me I should be, in the place of duty. Like so many others, Edmund Oliver joined up for service in World War I. The first professor of history at the University of Saskatchewan, and later principal of St. Andrew's College, Oliver donned a uniform in 1916, serving first as chaplain of the 196th Western Universities Battalion, a force made up of faculty and students from Canada's Western Universities. For the last two years of the war, he was stationed at a hospital behind the front lines in France. Married just five years at the time of his enlistment, he left behind his wife, Rita, and their two small sons. General Sims said that three years ago, men came to France to take part in a great adventure. Everybody thought it would be all over shortly, but now, he said, no one sees the end. I think the turmoil in Russia has made some a bit pessimistic. I still cling to the date of Christmas 1918 for returning home. I begin my day, usually, precisely at 8 a.m., by visiting all the seriously ill or dangerously ill on my list. We write letters or send cables or do any little human act of kindness that is possible. In one week this way, I wrote 420 letters and had to refuse many because I just could not do more. I frequently write letters from husbands to their wives. One told me today, put some barbed wire at the bottom of it. I had to think for a moment what he meant and then I realized he meant XXX for kisses. So I promised to send his barbed wire to his wife. I've distributed one bar of maple sugar already among the patients, those who were very sick. If the Lord never counts anything else to my credit during the war, he ought to reckon it for righteousness that I am giving up maple sugar, for he ought to know how much I like it. One often comes across curious phrases as one censors letters. I read one this morning written by a chap with a gunshot wound in the chest to another soldier still up the line. It is great, mate, to lie between the sheets. The patients are sometimes hugely funny. I advise them about love affairs and many other matters. They like talking about having to go over the top and about being blown up. I asked one chap how long he'd been there. He said, 15 months, and if I have to stay another 15 months, I shall feel like I am 102 years old. I think you would be interested to see the arrival of a convoy. They may come at any time. The patients come four in each ambulance lying down. It is a touching sight to see a large procession of ambulances arrive. I thank God, Rita, our lads are only babes. It makes me bear the loneliness. As I was in the evening service last night, I had just concluded the reading when an orderly flew up the aisle to me and whispered that Archibald, one of the seriously ill patients whom I had just seen a little before and who was supposed to be getting better, was dying in the operating theater. I left the service at once and flew to the operating room where he was lying on the operating table. He had a wounded leg that they had been trying for a month to save and there had been an internal hemorrhage. He was a chap that I had learned to love. I had been visiting him and praying with him for three or four weeks and I knew he was all right that way. Jock, I said, what is it, boy? Captain, he muttered. I'm fading away. I'll not be there when you come in the morning. What could I do? I never felt so helpless in my life. Everybody had stood back to let me get to him. I just took one hand in mine, placed my other on his brow and leaned down close to him and half comforted him, half prayed with him, told him it would be all right. He was a brave boy. I think I grew a year older in a few minutes, but I helped to save the boy. His pulse grew better and he became quiet. Mrs. Nicholson placed him under ether. Then I withdrew outside the door where I could hear the saw 
sawing off his leg. One thing is certain. I shall think of you often tonight as you hang up the children's stockings for Santa Claus, and I shall be with you tomorrow in all your Christmas festivities. It is just possible that I shall have an automobile given me by the YMCA for this work. If I get it, you can picture me as riding around the land with all the glory of Henry Ford. I am happy in my work, and I am out of danger, and I am husband of the best of wives and father of the most splendid of sons that ever were. So why shouldn't I be happy, even if Christmas comes within the sound of guns? Edmund Oliver was mentioned in dispatches for his service overseas and received the rank of Honorary Lieutenant Colonel. He survived the war and returned to his family in Saskatoon. Oliver was a famous man, was made Fellow of the Royal Society of Canada, received honorary degrees from Queens, Toronto, and Saskatchewan, and in 1930 was appointed moderator of the United Church of Canada. His rich legacy of war letters is held at the University of Saskatchewan Archives. <laughs>